Does that mean we didn't transplant people that didn't have cholangiocarcinoma? It doesn't. Most likely, most probably, we did. Several patients, but it does not affect the overall survival of the patients that did have transplantation. It's not an explanation for our results. As far as efficacy, with 58% five-year survival overall, 74% five-year survival after transplantation, 67 and 81 percent for patients with PSC and 44 and 61 percent for those with de novo cholangiocarcinoma. The efficacy is self-evident. Is it an appropriate use of donor organs? We compared survival back in 2004 between our cholangiocarcinoma patients shown in yellow with patients undergoing transplantation for other chronic liver diseases, including hepatocellular carcinoma. And as you can see, the PSC patients are slightly favored, but overall the survival is about the same. How about resection versus transplantation? And this is where it gets a little dangerous, particularly when there's a Stallworth uh, patobiliary surgeon that doesn't do transplantation in the crowd. And uh, sometimes I can feel a bit intimidated. Uh, but um, before you take um, the p position of the bull, please remember that the bull may be formidable and intimidating, but we know what happens to the bull in the ring. They can last a long time, but they never win. So Dave Nagorny and I looked at our experience uh, with the resection at, at the Mayo Clinic versus transplantation back in 2005 and looked at survival after operation. As you can see, survival after transplantation was better than survival after resection. We took out those patients that did not, that only had uh, de novo, or we took out the patients that had PSC, of course, and at that time showed a difference in survival of 71% versus 18% at five years. I've added the 61% off to the right margin there of the 42 patients that we've transplanted now, which is lower than that 71%, but still higher than the results we received with resection. Furthermore, you might say it's more appropriate to look at an intention to treat analysis. And even if you look at the, all the patients that were entered into the transplant protocol, regardless of whether they stage positive or not, it's 58 versus 21% survival which would now be down to 44% if we only included the de novo cholangiocarcinoma patients. Finally, and this is where the transplant surgeons get up in an uproar, is what the prioritization should be for deceased donor liver allocation. And I'm in Region 7, which involves Minnesota, North and South Dakota, Wisconsin, and Illinois. And after the MELD system went into effect in February of 2002, we met in September at the Chicago airport in order to discuss what prioritization should be. Now, being the single center in the country that does this operation, it was a memorable experience, and I had the UNOS representative take a group picture. What we eventually did was mirror the assignments uh, for hepatocellular carcinoma at that time, but doubled the interval from three months to six months. So at that time in September of 2002, most of our patients were transplanting melds of about 29 in Minnesota. Most of our patients were waiting about 12 months. Now that the uh, hepatocellular carcinoma has been redone, most of our patients are waiting about 18 months. And so we take all kinds of risks with marginal livers and uh, extended criteria donor livers from older patients, patients with brain tumors, and donation after cardiac death in order to transplant these patients in addition to living donor transplantation. So in summary, neoadjuvant therapy and liver transplantation does achieve excellent results for highly selected patients with early stage node negative disease, 74% survival at five years. Operative staging is essential as the findings preclude transplantation for approximately 20% of the patients. Morbidity is significant, but not prohibitive. Living donor transplantation is an attractive option for patients with cholangiocarcinoma. Patient survival after liver transplantation with this protocol do exceed all known results reported with resection for hilar cholangiocarcinoma. They compare favorably with survival after liver transplantation for other chronic liver diseases and hepatocellular carcinoma. And of course, we feel that these results warrant due consideration for deceased donor liver allocation. So where are we in 2009? I propose the following answers. Liver transplantation alone is fraught with early recurrence and poor patient survival. It should never be done. And all patients with primary sclerosing cholangitis should be studied extensively to rule out cholangiocarcinoma prior to transplantation. However, liver transplantation following neoadjuvant therapy 
has emerged as the treatment of choice for patients with hilar cholangiocarcinoma arising in the setting of PSC. And liver transplantation with neoadjuvant therapy is the only treatment that affords prolonged survival for patients with unresectable hilar cholangiocarcinoma. The question, of course, to answer, though, is whether we should consider liver transplantation with neoadjuvant therapy for patients with potentially resectable hilar cholangiocarcinoma. Now, keep in mind that the benefit for unresectable de novo cholangiocarcinoma is less than that for cholangiocarcinoma in the setting of PSC, only 61% five years after transplantation and 44% with an intention to treat analysis. I think that this question is unresolved. However, if we were to do it, how would we pick these patients? Should we pick patients requiring vascular reconstruction, which has considerable higher morbidity and mortality after resection, or perhaps even choose patients that have better donor or living donor availability? These are the questions we'll need to ask in the future. As I conclude, I'd like to acknowledge many of my colleagues at the Mayo Clinic who have had a, a very important role, both in the design of this protocol uh, pushing it forward and taking care of the patients, uh, particularly Greg Gores, uh, who was the surgical director for some time and now is our chair of uh, the division of GI, who is of paramount importance in initiating this protocol in 93, Julie Heimbach, one of my colleagues in transplant surgery, Dave Nagorny, who's here with us today, and a multitude of residents, transplant surgery fellows and hepatology fellows whose data you've also reviewed, including one of our medical students who wrote up the uh, complication data.